I think we're going to move on to all about kindergarten then. And I'll introduce our three kindergarten teachers and have, have them talk a little bit about their backgrounds. I think that's important for you to take the opportunity to brag a little bit. I know it's not in your nature, but talk a little bit about your experiences. Yeah. <laughs> our three kindergarten teachers, and I'll have them step forward and introduce themselves first. Jennifer Johnson, Jenny Walter, and Katie Bonney. So if you could, three could just introduce yourself and then let me know when you're ready. Sure. Jennifer for the presentation. All right. Um, I'm Jennifer Johnson. I um, have been teaching uh, six years. Next year, obviously, be my seventh year, and um, all of them have been here at Westwoods except for one. Um, I went, I was at a different school for a year, and um, my heart was at Westwoods, so I was really excited to be able to come back. And um, I love this school. Um, I primarily taught K two. Um, love Lower L. It's totally where my heart is, and uh, I think you'll find too with the other ladies too. Um, we're really um, passionate about teaching children to read and write um, at this, these young ages. Um, personal note, um, I'm married, have two sons. My oldest son will actually be a kindergartner this year at Westwoods, which I'm very excited about. And um, I have a younger son who will be two in March, and my um, husband and family and I live in the Lake Ann area. You're up. I'm oh, up. I forgot to turn on my <coughs> microphone. All right. Um, my name is Jenny Walter. Um, formerly Jenny Reno, just got married. I still refer to myself as Miss Reno all the time. Um, I have been teaching, this is my eighth year. I've been at Westwoods three years. I was at Interlochen. Mr. Scott actually hired me, so he's responsible for this. <laughs> um, and I came to Westwoods for part-time a while back, and then went back to Interlochen. Here I am. Um, I'm a child development major from Michigan State. I uh, worked in the laboratory there for a few years and I completed my master's through there as well in um, curriculum and teaching. I'm a reading recovery trained teacher. I love early literacy. Um, I'm the first person to tell you when I don't know something and probably the first person to ask for help um, to get what needs to be done to help your child. Um, what else? I have a great dog. Her name's Montana. <laughs> My kids know all about her. A little chocolate lab. Um, yeah. um, hello. My name is Katie Bonney, and I'm actually new here to Westwoods this year. Um, I arrived to Traverse City. I'm in the Traverse City area also about a year and a half ago. Um, my experience before working at Westwoods uh, was a substitute teacher last year in the Traverse City area schools and getting to know Traverse City, uh, which I fell to love uh, and decided I would like to stay here. Uh, before Traverse City, I was actually in China for four years teaching at the Michigan State University Lab School and developing curriculum for early childhood preschool program and Chinese immersion and English immersion programs. So. That's where my experience lies. Again, that's based in literacy, and I love watching kids learn to read and helping them learn to read uh, and write. And I'm just looking forward to kindergarten again next year and staying with my group of students for two years. That's what I think I'm most excited about being here at Westwoods, and they're great teachers. So. <laughs> On a personal note, I'm just new to the area and getting used to it, so thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, are you ready, Joe? Yeah. Well, you've already, I'll kind of cover this part. You've already really met uh, Mrs. Shaw and Mrs. Boudet. They were the, um, well, they vanished now, but they're, okay. If you haven't met them, they'll be coming up at the end to kind of talk about um, some of the more practical paperwork things in your folders, but they were out helping you. Uh, there are two uh, secretaries who uh, kind of run the office, so. Um, I, of course, I guess I neglected to introduce myself. I'm Sanders Scott, the principal here. Preschool teachers, I'll introduce uh, later. We have um, Mary Hall, Kelly Adams, Sarah Morrow. We'll talk, they'll talk about their preschool programming a little bit later. Um, Catherine McNitt is just had a baby, and so we have. Um, we have her substitute here, so, um, uh, Amanda Engel, who's Amanda, you can wave, and she can talk a little bit about Young Fives. She's taking over for Catherine in the Young Fives room. Okay, so now, Jennifer, you can kind of take over about adjusting to the new school year. You'll find that when your um, kindergartner starts 
school. Um, it'll be a huge transition for them, especially with all the everyday kindergarten that we now have, um, and we're very excited about. Um, when I taught kindergarten prior, we only had um, two, two, day, two full days and a half day. And um, what I can see what these kindergartners are doing already this year at Westwoods, and it is amazing how much further along they are. Um, so the adjustment to every day um, is going to be taxable on your student as well as on your family. So um, be prepared for that. But it's going to be a really fun time um, for them to make some um, new friends. Um, you know, getting used to those routines will definitely be um, important for the class as a whole, but for the individual and also for the teacher. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll have Suzanne interject here a little bit. Uh, Suzanne Caverly, currently she, she's going to have a kindergartner next year, so that's why she's here as a parent, but I'm going to have her put her teacher hat on for just a second. You talked a little bit about how the kids adjusted to, you know, I think we have a fair amount of parents who maybe are concerned about full day, every day for their kindergartner um, and that sort of thing, and I wanted Suzanne to be able to talk firsthand from a teacher having She's right now teaching kids every day, all day in kindergarten. And what that adjustment kind of looked like? Um, at first, it's very tiring for the children. Um, it takes a good six to eight weeks for the children to get used to coming here all day, every day. At first, you may hear, I'm tired, I don't like school, I don't want to go. But what I found after talking to those moms and dads is, I would say, really? Because when they're here, they love it. But when they get home, they kind of let down their hair and go, I'm so tired. So you have to remember that transitions take time. And by about Halloween, everybody's kind of used to things. And now in kindergarten, we're rocking and rolling and nobody, we, we're going forward and nobody's looked back. So it's great. And I would say that I think we found that with two and a half day kindergarten as well, that the kids were, whipped you know after a full day um so the biggest thing i think is the consistency getting into a consistent schedule um so i don't know that there's been much change it's just that maybe they got to sleep on the following day but really the consistency of every day the same thing and not having the child wonder is today a school day or not is i think really a positive a positive change daily activity just different things that these are all things that your child will encounter throughout the day. Our days are packed, really. In, in all grade levels, they are packed with our um, core curriculum, with you know, math, science, social studies, language, arts. And, um, but we also you know, make time for snack <laughs> so your child can eat, <laughs> and um, lunch, of course. And in kindergarten, we have choice time where they get to explore the classroom and really um, do what interests them. But we also uh, work with our uh, curriculum that we have in social studies, where they you know, learning how to get along with with others. And it's really it's a great program that we have because it's what is it called in kindergarten? Would you remind me? Social studies. Lab. It is also in kindergarten. Okay. Um, it puts the kids in scenarios that are real life to them, and getting along, um, how to ask for help who are the school helpers, those type of things for social studies. So it's very relevant to their lives. Um, we'll talk about math in a little bit. Um, science, we have um, science kits that we use and we work really closely with um, our grade level content expectations to make sure that your child is reaching all the goals that they're supposed to reach for kindergarten. Do you have any questions day. at any point during this presentation? Just raise your hand. You don't have to wait until the end. Sure. Um, do you incorporate art, music? Yes. And we have a slide coming up on our specials, and we'll let you know what we do and how often. Yeah, great question, though. And by the way, foreign language is kind of being discussed right now across mm -hmm. the district. We don't know really what that'll look like yet, but that is something <coughs> we're looking at implementing in the elementary school. What grades and to what degree and how many times a week and all that sort of thing has not been worked out yet. but that may be an opportunity that's going to be there. I mean, I would say it's going to be in the elementary school. I don't know what else. I don't know what language yet or anything like that. But I think the decision, there's a pretty good commitment to there will be foreign language instruction at some level. Okay. You'll notice up there there's, oops, sorry. 
there was um, rest reading and we do take some time during the day to have some downtime because it is a long day for them. So we'll ask you, we have a little list of supplies at the end. One of the things your child will need to bring is a rest towel so that they can um, have some downtime where they sit with books and look at books for a, you know, a short period of time just to kind of relax and, you know, unwind a little bit and recharge. Re recharge. Yeah. yeah. And as far as writing goes, um, I think it's pretty exciting. I go into Suzanne's room one day a week during recess and um, I'm always amazed at what I see on the wall with how, how far these children have come in just a few short months. We have a great writing program here and it's called Lucy Calkins uh, Writer's Workshop. And it starts really basic with just helping them understand that a story is on a page and it's about yourself. It's about something you know about, you know. Um, and I remember walking in and looking at it and thinking, wow, you know, they're labeling the parts on the picture. And I walked in the other day and there's like four lines on this paper and this kid has like added these little like uh, spider legs on. He wrote all these words and there were all the sounds there. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this kid's in kindergarten. Like, it was, it was really inspiring to see. I mean, coming from second grade, I taught first grade last year and second grade this year, but kind of like, wow, you know, that's a lot for a kindergartner. But they're here every day and they write every day for, you know, 40 plus minutes. And they really enjoy it and they're excited to share their stories about their lives. So I think that we're very fortunate to have that. And both Jennifer and Jenny uh, loop all, have already experienced a loop, looping from first grade to second grade with their kids. And so they're kind of moving back down to experience that with kindergarten. And there's an awful lot of research behind <coughs> the idea of looping that it's different from other schools where you'll see some multi-age where you'll have kids in, in first through third grade in the same room. And maybe the first graders will stay with that same teacher three years in a row in the third grade you know, falls off here and goes on to the next. Um, looping is different in that, in, in, from that in that the same, the kids in the, in the classroom are all in the same age and they just stay with that teacher for the following year. And there's the, the research also um, shows that it really is effective for two years. And when you get into a third year, you start to hit the law of diminishing returns. And, and so that's why we do it in two year cycles. Um, and the biggest benefit is right at the bottom is, is we see it, the, the research shows that there's a huge amount of academic gains made because especially in that second year, there's not a lot of, well, this is the routine of the classroom. The children have been through a year in that classroom. They know how it works. Instructions, you're really able to hit the ground running in the fall. Um, so you'll see the most benefit of the loop in first grade. Um, and, uh, you know, we, it's been hugely popular with our parents, too. We've gotten a huge amount of feedback, uh, positive feedback. And something to keep in mind is you do have the option to opt out of that and go into another classroom. So it's not a it's not written in stone and it's not some sort of you know thing that every child's sentenced to that it's just that it really helps us um, we just found it to be really beneficial any questions so far about looping or anything else <laughs>